Okay, it's the beginning. It's very difficult, very difficult because uh, when you're dealing with clients, you know how much you will make. How, you know that if you do the work and if you deliver what you promise to the clients, you will receive your uh, image. Another other people that doing the same thing you do that uh, have some same problem as you. Same, uh, you can find someone that more successful with you, have different. Uh, different experience with Shopify, maybe someone that only have one application that do good numbers and someone that's only focused on traffic from outside Shopify, some different ideas that will like help you to, to understand and grow you. From Morocco your where I don't, we don't have like a lot of digital nomad here and coming yeah. actually to Bali was like a, a hub for digital nomad. Yeah. And the, uh, it was really good experience to meet with other it Indians. It was really special to be able to meet all of this uh, developer that you already saw in Twitter, in person. Yeah. Really Welcome, special. guys, to Yale Let's Code Podcast, a podcast where interview software engineer to share their entrepreneurial story. And here we are, and we have Rida, a Shopify developer. He will be sharing with us his story about how did he get started into Shopify development, how he sold his first Shopify app, and more in this episode. So let's see you after this intro. So Rida, can you introduce yourself? Hello, Elias. Hello, guys. My name is Rida. I'm a 25 Moroccan software engineer. I have a two minutes of application. And today I'm here to share my story with, uh, with you. And uh, thank you, Elias, for uh, hosting me. Sure, you are welcome. Can you give the audience more about how did you get started in web development? When I was in high school, I started my journey as a developer. I started basically by creating WordPress websites, doing some HTML, CSS, some basic coding. After I finished my high school, I started to study. I learned software engineer to school. And after that, I switched to web development. Actually, I started last basic C and after that I switched to web development because I feel it's more my thing. Yeah, that's right. But it's, I was like study and doing web development in the same time. You know? okay. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. So you got your degree in computer science? Yeah, it's equivalent of the, yeah, computer science, yeah. Okay. So you got like the equivalent for computer science. Yeah. And the switch from doing just web WordPress stuff and into starting your journey in the Shopify development. Yeah, how I switch? First of all, I start like doing some freelance work, like basically making a WordPress website, editing WordPress, doing some coding, basic website coding. After that, I, me and because I, as you know, I start this journey with my partner. So after that, we receive uh, too many freelance or Shopify or stores, we start doing some basic editing in stores, adding some sections, removing that. And after that, we feel in love with this with Shopify. And it was like really funny. And it's the document, the community is like easy to understand. After that, we switch to like more to Shopify, like everything that includes Shopify, editing themes, making some custom applications for our, our customers. Yeah, this how we switch. This basically, we was working with the uh, with store with with website, and after that we switch to stores. To Shopify. You start be your first Shopify freelancer before you start doing your own Shopify app. Basically, it was like three months in the period of uh, pandemic, three months like that, and after the pandemic is finished. We start to start to like to post every freelance we have because we have too many works, different clients, some like some Shopify clients and some old clients from uh, our uh, WordPress journey. So we stop, we take a break. After that, we start start like searching for something something better because the problem with the freelancing and and the dealing with clients is. You always problems, always updates. You have it's I, I can't. It's like a real job, actually. It's like a real job. Yes. 
you mentioned that you, you've been doing freelancer for three months and after that you take a break and after that you did search in your own journey, in like a, your own Shopify app journey. How did yeah. you find your first client? Because uh, three months is like a short period. No, no, actually my three months with uh, Shopify freelancer, I, but for freelance it's fine. For one year and a half, so one year. Okay. That should be fast, like the last three months of our uh, freelance job. Yes, in three months, I was. Like, yeah, yeah, three months is very, yeah, very short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we start. We actually we start with the local freelance in Morocco. After that, we switch to Fiverr. We post our gig. After that, we we start receiving clients, and. Uh, one of the clients that have a Shopify store, he told us, hey guys, do you know how I, I want to edit this page? I want to add this uh, post in the future. I said, yeah, let's go. And after that, we start doing, we doing, doing Shopify freelance. This client bring another clients. And... Awesome. And how was, how did you get your first freelance client? Uh, my fr- okay, it uh, was uh, one, of, one of my friends refer us because he know that we are developers. Refer us to his cousin want to start a company. And okay. when he want to start a company, he need a website. And he told us, hey, I know some guys that will do this job. And uh, yeah, we, this is how we start our first client. It's been local. Our first client was a local business, local okay. Moroccan yeah. business. Did you also like a work with international client after this local business? Yeah, yeah, I work with international client, but but is from Fiverr. So Fiverr is doing the everything. So we just only handle the project the, that Fiverr has too many traffic. That's it. And start doing freelancer, uh, WordPress, do developing a website for local business and stuff like that. After that, you go to international platform like Fiverr, getting some freelance yeah. client there. And the, in the last three months of your freelance journey, you start doing Shopify mostly client. And after yeah. that, you start your Shopify app journey. How did you find the, twi- the switch from being a freelancer to being a Shopify app founder? Okay. It's at the beginning. It's very difficult, very difficult because uh, when you're dealing with clients, you know how much you will make. Uh, you know that if you do the work and if you deliver what you promise to the clients, you will receive your uh, like your payment. To switch to application that is based on multi multi aspects, like you can't know that if your application it will work. You do, you can't know if uh, the market will love your application or the clients will pay for your app. So it's very hard and very difficult. And for the first three months. The most hard, harder experience I ever have in my life because it's really hard to switch from getting paid by hours or by project, get paid by the results, how your app form to the clients. Yeah, it's very hard. Switch from a consistent paycheck at the end of each month or at the end, getting that the same, I would say, security in terms of money. How did you with with that different difference yeah actually in the beginning we like when we start making shopify app so we stop every clients and we start like burning our saving it was uh, only focusing in making uh, apps after the first three months of uh, making apps and uh, launching applications we see no reason to be honest we see no reason because we, we was doing everything wrong everything wrong with the uh, Shopify apps and the SaaS on general. So we start receiving some some small freelance projects to cover our expensive and to keep keep some money coming. Yeah. You mentioned that did some mistake while building your first. What are the mistakes that you made that you think is very important to avoid? Okay. First of all, never and never go to store and find the application that works and copy pass very huge mistake and this is a waste of time this is my first mistake and this is some of uh, the the mistake that i will regret because you don't know the market you don't know how much the application is making even if you see too much reviews too much hype too much you can't like 
copy something that works and works for you. And uh, yeah, and don't check too much to launch your application. Because our app is take first app is take three months to launch our first application. And after launching the app, it was was making nothing with us with three months on application that's not working. No one wants it. And it's a copy path from application that is very old than us and understand the market better we do. There is other mistake that you would like to share with us or it's the, the only one that's important? Okay. Another mistake is that you have to focus on marketing and stop over engineer. Whoa. Because over engineering and keep like adding futures and adding some like some options that you don't know if someone needs it. You just keep uh, let's add this, let's optimize this, let's remove this, let's uh, this. And at the end, no one will use your application. So the first thing you can do is make like in the small option, uh, option that will make the, that make the clients or the Shopify customer want to use the application and fix his uh, problem. And after that, you can add me as many as you want. But, but before you validate your, your application or your idea, never over engineer that or add too many options at the beginning. Keep it simple as a uh, And uh, your journey, what was your first Shopify app that made, like I would say your first successful Shopify app? Our first Shopify apps that make like success is a, is a Shopify apps that is uh, been in two days. It's like the most easy app we build. The method that we find the application is very, is very easy. We was like searching in Shopify community. We see a, like a trade. Someone have a problem with his uh, store. And my partner said, look, this uh, guy have this problem. I see too many people have the same problem. Let's make a, a solution. So we make a solution for the, for this customer and we make like a very simple X or UI for the application. We, la- we launched the app and after two or three months, the app starts like making 1K, 1K per month. The, yeah, this is the application. The method or the progress is we we see that people need, have a problem and make a, the solution for these people. And we, we make it very simple, very easy to use, and we launch it. I will not tell you that uh, after launching the app, the app that we didn't uh, like make too many options and start improving the app. No, we start improving the app, getting feedback from customer. They more add some future, customize uh, the app for uh, certain clients. But after that is uh, is the way we do the right thing by focusing on solving other people's problems. Yeah, makes us. I think the, the this uh, the Shopify app that got sorry you you made it. Yeah, it's the, the, yeah. The shop. Can you share with us how was the experience? Who did you approach the seller or you get an offer? How was the process? Uh, okay. Of the okay. The app. We list the app on Acquire because we want to focus on another project. We listed, we just wait like for, we give it like two months. After that, uh, we start getting too many, too many requests. After that, we start talking with the certain buyers and uh, we receive a good offer. And we start sharing our data, sharing our code. Yeah. And after that, uh, Acquire, Acquire. Acquire.com been handle every every everything. So the experience was very simple because uh, because the platform did everything right. Yeah. Can you share with us the number deal was for this app? Share this number. The number is was like five five figures. Yeah, it okay. was uh, five figures, more than ten ten thousand dollar. Okay. Yeah, but it was like for a small application, it was a good because the app didn't uh, too much from our time. Yeah, I can see it's a, a good win. Be- beside on the code and the, how much the app take to to grow and to. Can you give us more insight about uh, the app? How much revenue uh, the app was making before getting acquired, and uh, the number of installed before getting. The app was uh, doing more than one and a half k per month, and uh, the user was like it's almost one one k user. Most of them is paid users. And after that, we were thinking if the app is not, we don't know how we can grow the app more. And so we want to focus on other projects. So we, we list the app on Acquire. And after that, we start uh, the process to like to sell our app with the buyer. And yeah, 
That's it. Thank you for sharing this information about that question. Yes. And uh, what was the, the second app that you work on? Second app was actually the second app uh, mixed two apps on the store. We want to, for someone to like, to have two apps to do like a similar job. We make an application that do for both. We combine the two applications. Uh, and we launched the application. We put it like for free for a couple of weeks. We get back. We improve the app. And after that, we keep uh, improving the app. And uh, right now it's doing well, actually. Okay, so the app still working eh? and still working. Yeah. We still improving the app. Can you share with us uh, some number like install? Yeah, uh, ship install. Uh, yeah, okay. Ship install is like one one thousand okay. active user. Most of them is a pay a paid user, and the number is is doing almost by five five thousand. Yeah. You think that uh, do you have any plan to exit this project? Much value when you are getting active. Oh uh, yeah. Actually, I can't say anything because I really don't know what we will do with this app because the potential is huge. And as you see, you can't know if we see that there are another project that will do good or we want to focus on other projects. We can sell it, but right now it's doing good. We keep improving the app. We keep, we keep adding some features and we check with the client. In general, we will be after. I can't see that we will sell it, we will not, because it depends on too many things. If the app is is doing crazy numbers in next months, or there are some drop or something, or there are some of other products that is doing well, and we want to focus more on it. But basically, we we'll only do, right now, we we'll only improve the app and see how we will. Okay, actually, we have some other uh, Spotify apps. Most of them is like medium app. So it's not uh, the big applications, but the problem that we have now is have too many applications, too many doing well, some not doing well. But uh, we only right now we only focus on the three or some or four applications that that have a huge potential, and we start like pushing hard on adding features, uh, do some things. Yeah, that's it. Because because the the mistake that we did for last two years is that we keep publishing apps without doing any marketing, any any some some influencer or something who was like depending on Shopify apps. But right now we start like doing some marketing, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So. so- we cover, I think, all the Shopify app that you work on. And building all this Shopify app, what thing and lesson that you learn from building all of the Shopify app and what mistake that you make with all of this one that you, you regret doing? Like the mistake that you, you made. Mistake uh, with that, yeah. Yeah, mistake and the, the lesson that you learn from the Shopify app. Uh, for the mistake... Uh... I said in the beginning, I will, if I start from the beginning, I will not over engineer. I will not take too much to launch my application. I will focus more on the customer and the feedback so I can make up that solve the problem. And the, the lesson I really learned is that I need to start focusing on my, doing marketing and optimize my applications to get users outside of Shopify app stores because if you only focus on Shopify app store, you will miss too many customers, too many users that that doesn't share so much on Shopify app store. And that you face while being in this journey as a dev slash entrepreneur. The most uh, common uh, challenge or uh, problem you face is when you being a solo developer or indie hacker, you can have to do everything. You have to do marketing design, brainstorming ideas, development, customer support, technical support, everything. You have to deal with everything and you have to like to make a good routine so you can adapt to this lifestyle because sometimes you will be out and some clients have a problem, some 
like maybe some updates, some server get down and you are out, you have to back and fix the problem. So in the first uh, days, you will have uh, too many, like you have to sacrifice too many hours to, to learn how you can deal with this. And some sometimes you will not have time to do anything else. You just like work and after you finish, you don't know if this work you put will will work out or no because you can launch like 10, 10 Shopify apps and at the, at the end you will like you will lose because you don't know you don't know if it will work or not because you can do everything right for your app you will have a good branding good uh, user experience good tech the app is working good pricing and the app will not work Th- that's it this is the hard truth but uh, generally the most Thing that I will recommend someone to do is to start small, start with one application, see if how will goes, if works, it's good. If not, you can learn from you from the mistake you made for your application, and uh, be patient about the result because it will take so much time. Yeah, that's it. And sometimes you you launch application five months, and after five months the application starts to get some momentum and some notice from users and the app is like start to grow uh, to grow more than what the app did in the five uh, five months so it's you can't pretend what will happen in the future because the, maybe someone discovered your application and he shared it with his community or some other to try your application and start to like to push it to his audience for free this doesn't happen allowed to us you can't know but uh, yeah, but uh, the main uh, lessons I learned is to be patient and like just to keep testing and see what will work for you. Okay, it sounds good. I think you mentioned a lot of good insight here about uh, the challenge that you face. And you mentioned some point about like uh, working too much. I would like to know more about how do you deal with the work-life balance? If there is a balance, I would say. so. How did you spend most of of your day? Do you like um sacrifice some time for not sacrifice, but do you spend some time with your family, doing some hobbies or something like this? Yes, I was like for last for the, for last couple of months I was traveling in Asia. So this is one of the good things about being an indie hacker or digital nomad. You can travel and work from different countries you no need to be like in office or something my my routine is start to be like more work train maybe sometimes go out in the weekends but mostly i work six days uh, i only have one day off and i work like maybe six hours seven hours a day and after that i will go to gym or maybe go out with my friends but beginning, I was working too much. I was working too much. I was working like 10, day, 10 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. But right now I start to, start to get, I, I start to, to notice that if you have a good balance, you will have a more productive. And I start to take care of my health, do some sports, go out, maybe sometime. But mostly, most of my work, most of my time is work. Train, go out. Yeah, I have some hobbies, but not that, that interesting. I mean, if you work too much, it doesn't mean that you are more productive. Sometimes you, you just True. have to work some a certain period of time, and you True. True. like uh crush your day. And uh, if you have a good uh, a good life balance, you will have a productive work. It doesn't mean if you stay on the computer for ten ten hours or twelve hours. You will like uh, productive uh, more because you, you will be stuck on one task or one problem and you will be there for four hours. But if you have a good balance, you will maybe like, three or four hours you can finish everything and it will be good. But mostly you have to like to have uh, one thing you want to finish a day. For me, I will five or or three tasks to finish. And after that, I can like, like do other things, like go out or watch my favorite show. It's, it depends. It depends on the daily tasks. For right now, 
sometimes I stuck on the customer support, maybe like for two or three hours of only like answering the clients or fix the some issue with the with their store. But right now, after we optimize the applications and we start to like to to make a documents for our app apps. We see that uh, our tickets or support been more, more slowly and we start to get in few compared to before we make this documents and optimize up. All the support we have been handled by us, but we outsource some, right now we start to outsource him, like for some tasks, like UI design for some marketing, some branding, we start to outsource because it takes too much time of our times and it's not it's not making some difference if someone do it if someone do our or you will not our application the most thing that we see that is our application is the customer support because if we handle the support by us we know what is the problem we know what the customer wants and we be close to our clients and we understand the main problem and we can in the future make a good decisions and we can add a good futures, good options to application. And yeah, that is why we didn't outsource our client support because it's, it's more good for us to be close to the clients than someone else. Uh, so those, yeah, yeah some... because if you are close to your clients, you will understand the main problem. You will talk with them. They, maybe they give you good ideas because you will you can't understand everything about Shopify about what the clients want because every clients have a different point of view, different uh, yeah, different look to the problem, different uh, different understanding. Yeah, perspective. Yeah, this is the word. Our main goal right now is to really, really understand what the clients want and improve our application based on the client's feedback. This is uh, our goal right now is to optimize the applications to what clients want. And this will really work if you like, if you understand your clients and give them what they want, you will, the application will be successful because at the end you make something for the clients. It's not for you or for Shopify, it's for the clients of Shopify. Do you think the secret formula for a successful Shopify app? The secret formula for successful Shopify app or for any SaaS or any application is to focus on what the clients want because uh, if the clients come and install your application and it look very easy to use, it's not like to be fancy using some crazy UI. It's to be simple, easy to use understandable someone go don't have any idea about check or anything click like two or three buttons get what he wants from the app it will be successful and you have to maybe to focus on making documents make the user very easy at the end you will need to be like to have a good support because a good support will keep the clients back and the clients if have a a good experience with your app, he will share it with his. And this will help to grow the application. Because in the beginning, you launch the application, you will get some few clients. If the first like 10 or 20 clients don't like the, your application, they will uninstall the app. The, the app, I will not get feedback. But if the first clients come, use the app, find the app is very useful, easy to use, simple. They will recommend it to, to some of his friends and you start like getting too many referral clients. After that, the app starts to grow. And after the app starts to grow, you have, now you have, it's your job to give them good experience by, uh, by giving them a good support. If one of your clients ask you about any like update or option, you have to add it as soon as possible because this will, will keep the clients. Because if you go to Shopify, there are too many apps. If someone disinstall your app, he will go install another app. But what will your clients is your ex his experience with your app, the support, the documents, the user experience also. Yeah, that's it. okay. Yeah. Do you have something special for uh, the Shopify that you would like to share with? How do you think uh, apps are 
some uh, secret about having a good looking and uh, a good landing page for your Shopify? Actually, you have to focus more on uh, to make the user understand what your app do. Because uh, you will not have to write our app is do this is you have to write the main problem the app fix it like if your app is for upsell you have to mention that you to your user that our app is doing upsell for like this and like this you have to also to more to mention what is the options that your app is doing like my app is to upsell in collection to upsell in product like with pricing with with options with stuff. So the user will understand what he, he is going to install because if you don't write a good description, good, you will get you will get too many install, but the user will go to your application and see it. it's not what you said in the listening. And this will affect your rank because if you have too many installs and these installs in the same time, you will, you the algorithm will put you down. I will give one tip. It's uh, really good for everyone that want to like to list his application is to focus in, in micro micro niche or micro keywords don't focus in large keywords if you make applications at for add to cart don't like go and focus on add to cart keywords because it's very difficult you have to work on a small problem and the small niche or small people that need uh, for example add to cart in like for a specific for a specific pay, payments cash on delivery maybe and from there you can go and go to other keywords because if you focus in the, in a big or a large uh, keyword you will set in down pages and no one will find you so you have to focus on micro keywords to like to get some install and some client in the beginning yeah this is a really good uh, thing to mention because your Shopify app store listing is one of the important channel and also you will get a lot of traffic yeah. from uh, Shopify app store. So if you, it's really important to focus on that and to put a lot of effort in that because this is, will be one of your main channel, main user acquisition channel. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. It's, it's really, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really important to focus on that. And also, yeah, technique. it's free. It's free, and yeah, it's free, and and there are too many, too many users that searching on Shopify App Store. And if you like, you said if you have optimal listening and you have a good, like, good looking screenshots, icon, good description, good keyword, you will you will get too many, too many users, and then you will start to to grow. And when you start to grow and you start to get clients, you will start to understand what the user want. Because when you make application at the beginning, you can make it for some problem. And after you get a client's feedback, you will switch the direction of the application to another direction. Because maybe in the beginning, making up for a problem and, the, and one of the clients come and tell you, no, this problem, is, don't want this problem to be fixed. We want this. And you you switch the app to another direction and you get to, you get some Sanya. Also, one of the things also make sure that you have Google Analytics installed in your Shopify app listing, so you can track the data about how many people are visiting your Shopify app listing, how many people are yeah uh, adding to to their Shopify store. So this is a really good thing to do so you can uh, track your marketing effort and stuff like this and how and also you can do like um maybe try different screenshots e different, yeah yeah, yeah. Thin. so it will be really good to have like at least uh, some tracking already set so fr from from the day one it will be much better so you will have like a historical data about your shopify app listing and also in your uh, sure, sure, yeah. store. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Google Analytics is help allow to understand if you like mix some chains and you see that the install drop or the install go up. It's a really, really good tool to use. And uh, as you said, I really recommend it for someone to put uh, the Google Analytics since day one. And uh, and for 
for like for like for A B testing, we are not using any app. We are we are use the simple Shopify analytics and uh, Google Analytics, of course. And we like for right now, we we not using any any other software or something. We only use the the most popular one is uh, Google Analytics. Okay, it makes sense. So talking about the, the Shopify analytics, there is already like an article from a friend of mine about how you can set up Google Analytics with your Shopify app listing. So I will mention it in the show notes. So make sure that you check all the link that we mentioned in the show notes. And if you, if you are seeing this podcast from YouTube, this will be in the video description. So we cover a lot of ground here for uh, like uh, Shopify stuff. And we would like to get more of, like, I would say, personal stuff. So you mentioned that you have been uh, to Asia as a digital nomad. How was the experience yeah. uh, going to, I think, uh, to Bali? How was the experience uh, discovering this place, meeting other like-minded people? And uh, how was the experience overall? Uh, it was an amazing experience. One of the experiences that are... I will remember for my rest of, uh, of my life. Uh, really good place to be. Uh, really good community, especially, specifically Bali and uh, Changu. They are allowed of place to work there. Too many like-minded people. You can go just to, to and you will find too many like uh, digital nomads that work in there. Maybe they are doing SaaS, some not doing SaaS. Uh, you can find some someone to work with but in my experience i find i find like too many people that do in the shopify apps there we make a small meeting for uh, shopify app developers and this was a good a good uh, experience to meet another other people that doing the same thing you do that you have some same problem as you same uh, you can find someone that more successful with you have different uh different experience with Shopify, maybe someone that only have one application that do good numbers and someone that only focus on traffic from outside Shopify, some different ideas that will like help you to, to understand and grow your, your apps also. But in the lifestyle, it's really good like to live there. Uh, and I have nothing to see more the positive things about uh, Bali or South Asia. It's a really good uh, place to be. Yeah, and uh, really excited to be back there. So Yeah, awesome, yeah. I, I have like a similar experience to yours. It was really, really good experience there. And uh, coming from Morocco where I don't, we don't have like a lot of digital nomad here. And coming yeah. actually to Bali it was like a, a hub for digital nomad. Yeah. And the... Uh, it was really good experience to meet with other indie hacker. I I got invited by uh, someone on Twitter called the Google Sheet Wizard for like a, an indie hacker meetup, and uh, yeah. we are like about ten people. So each day, not each day, each week, we'll be gathering in a co-working space, especially in Nebula co-working space. And at the end of the day, we will have like a demo time, so you can showcase what you have been working on during the day it was really great experience uh, like a meeting with other like-minded people getting to know them having some coffee chat with them it was really special and there's a lot of people there that they are uh, like a good to work with and good to meet because they are sharing the same mindset as yours and they are working on similar field as yours so it was a really good experience, and I think uh, I will do it next time. <laughs> a good, good, yeah, yeah, it was good. And the best thing is that everyone there want to help you, want to like to to give you advice, to share, and uh, this is the best thing about uh, people that uh, in the, uh, specifically in this uh, Shopify community, everyone want to help, want to like to to give you some advice or tips. As is a really really good community, and I really I really think it's one of the best. Yeah, I, I've I been, would yeah. say so. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think also, the Shopify developer community. Yeah, it's really helpful, very kind. So you can ask yeah. me on Twitter for an advice. You are. Yeah, you will be happy to share with, to share it with you. They will not. Yeah, yeah. It. So just uh, yeah. be, be kind to ask. Uh, when, be kind when you are asking question and yeah, yeah, yeah. you will get an answer for that. I don't think yeah. that a Shopify developer will hesitate to answer. If they are not answering, maybe they are busy, so you don't know what is happening in their life. So just make sure that you give it a shot and you don't know what to expect. So I think uh, we share more about your uh, story, building Shopify app and your uh, digital nomad experience. Uh, what places that you would like to visit next as a digital nomad that you are thinking about? Uh, right now, I'm thinking about uh, maybe maybe go to to Bangkok, maybe. But the but but for me, uh, I I was like thinking to go to Shopify uh, developer events. Yeah. I guess uh, it's edition, yeah. But uh, next uh, this year, or um, maybe next next year, the next uh, edition, I will go because uh, I want to meet uh, with the other Shopify apps developer or other Shopify developer in general. And uh, yeah, this is one of uh, the the place I want to go is to visit uh, Shopify headquarters. I guess. Yeah. I hope. Is, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I hope you will make it next year because this was really. Yeah. Even there, it was uh, good to meet. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw too many pictures and clips yeah. on Twitter. Yeah, it was, it was a good, a good experience for uh, because you, you was there. Yep. Yeah, you showed me a lot of pictures. Yeah, it was. I, I was there this year, and uh, hopefully, I will also be next year. So it, it was really special to be able to meet all of this uh, developer that you already saw in Twitter, in person. Yeah. It was really special because in, in person is different than online for sure, but online sure. is still good, but in person it's much better. Yeah, yeah, it's much better to meet someone in person than on social media. Yeah, that's it. Uh, our last question will be about the the tips and resources that you would like to share with us for someone that is doing like a software development and would like to start to get their hand dirty in uh, in Shopify app development business or in entrepreneurship in general. Okay, for uh, resource of, uh, basically I will recommend the Shopify documents. It's very good and really easy. And uh, the second I will like I want to mention your uh, your profile. You have uh, too many like resources, and if you go to your Twitter, you will see too you will see too many too many like uh, Shopify developers, Shopify communities, and I will uh, I recommend like someone to like just go to Twitter, and you will find too many people that doing Shopify apps or doing SaaS on general. For books, I only have one book that is I really recommend for everyone is uh, Khaled and Sexy Business. is really good book. It's one of the books that I, I really recommend everyone that talk about uh, want to start his journey on in sexy business. I will yeah. And sexy. sexy business. Yeah. I will share it yeah, all out. Yeah. Out, so. Yeah, yeah. make sure that you yeah but if uh, someone wants to start you will find too many like uh, resources uh, if you go to Shopify uh, partners or Shopify Academy you will find too many resources too many videos too many uh, documents and if you have any problem you can post it on uh, Shopify community or just ask Shopify support they will help you yep exactly Everyone will be. And I can like mention uh, the story. I can mention the uh, uh, UNS uh, Discord. He have a good yeah. community in Discord. Yeah. Yeah. UNS if, uh, Club. Yeah, Blank Club. Yeah. Yeah. I have a good uh, Discord community. Yep. I I will put the link in the description so yeah, sure. you can check it out. And also, I had the 
Blank Club as my first guest in my podcast, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> If you want, yeah. check the full podcast. Uh, he's a good guy. Yes. And he's also Moroccan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and for people that would like to know more about you and uh, the stuff that you are working on, where they can find you? I I have a Twitter and LinkedIn, but uh, mostly I post on Twitter because uh, LinkedIn is updated. <laughs> and I am more active on Twitter than LinkedIn, yeah, but uh, my my Twitter is the uh, same my, as my name. You can just search for my name on Twitter and you will find my profile. Yeah, that's it. I only have a Twitter account. I think we are about to... We are about to end this episode. So thank you so much, Rida, for uh, for your time and uh, accepting my invitation to be guest in my podcast and uh, for sharing all of this uh, valuable insight and your story about getting started in uh, Shopify app development and uh, all of your secrets and the uh, Shopify app that you build. And uh, the mic is yours, so you can uh, you can have a word to the audience. Yeah. Oh, first, uh, it's my pleasure to be in your podcast, and uh, I hope uh, people is, uh, like the uh, the people that uh, listen to this uh, podcast or watch it on YouTube get some information because it's like my second podcast with English because English is not my first language, but I try to to make it like really simple uh, to to someone to understand what I want. To say or to me uh, but uh, yeah thank you Elias for hosting me and uh, I hope I can like uh, give some knowledge or some experience that I learn and uh, I still like uh, uh, most of the people are still learning and uh, still understanding too many things but I share my my small experience or knowledge with the entrepreneurial or Shopify development yeah yeah thank awesome you. Thank you so much and see you guys on the next episode.